Hi guys, welcome to Biochemistry and Cell Biology, and in this presentation I'll be covering the cytosol and the cytoskeleton. So the learning objectives are to know the basic components which make up the cytoskeleton, to know the structure and functions of these components, and to be able to give examples of diseases that occur as a result of deformation or a lack of a particular cytoskeletal filament. So what is the cytoskeleton? Well, if you think about it, it is literally a skeleton for the cell. It provides mechanical strength for the cell, controls the shape of the cell, it helps transport organelles and other things around the cell, and it actually consists of only three types of filaments. We've got actin, intermediate, and microtubules. So this is just a graph showing you all the different um, filaments. So here, this is what actin filaments are displayed as. So it goes all the way around the cell and you can find it mainly towards the outside of the cell. This one here is the microtubules. As you can see, it extends all the way around the cell. And this one here is intermediate as it fills up all the sort of spaces in between. So let's start off with inter intermediate filaments. So as you see here, inter intermediate filaments are mainly from these spots here, the desmosomes. So intermediate filaments are rope-like fibers with a diameter of about 10 nanometers. They are made of fibrous intermediate filament proteins. One type of intermediate filament forms a meshwork called the nuclear lamina just beneath the inner nuclear membrane. Other types extend across the cytoplasm giving cells mechanical strength and distributing the mechanical stresses in an epithelial tissue by spanning the cytoplasm from one cell, cell junction to another. Intermediate filaments are very flexible and have great tensile strength. They form under stress but do not rupture. Then we've got microtubules which extend from the centres bit here. So microtubules are hollow cylinders made of the protein tubulin. They are long and straight and typically have one end attached to a single microtubule organised centre called a centrosome. With an outer diameter of about 25 nanometers, microtubules are more rigid than actin filaments or intermediate filaments and they rupture when stretched. And finally, we've got actin filaments, which, as I said, are mainly found towards the outside of their cells. So actin filaments are helical polymers of the protein actin. They are flexible structures with a diameter of about 7 nanometers that are organized into a variety of linear bundles, two-dimensional networks, and three-dimensional gels. Although actin filaments are dispersed throughout the cell, they are most highly concentrated in the cortex, which is what I mentioned, which is the layer of cytoplasm just beneath the plasma membrane. So we're going to start off talking about microtubules. So microtubules are hollow cylindrical proteins that are used for the transport, driving and positioning of organelles. They have a diameter of about 25 nanometers and they are primarily made up of two proteins, alpha tubulin and beta tubulin. And if we just go to the previous slide, as you can see it makes up like a tube shape. So each rotation of that cylinder has 13 tubulin molecules. So just to point out here, this YouTube clip here, I highly recommend you watch it. it. It literally shows you everything about the internal network of a cell and quite a lot of detail about the cytoskeleton. So this here is the microtubule and this is a protein that will transport organelles to and from directions. So if it's traveling from the negative to the positive end, the type of protein that will carry these are called kinesins and this here is a lysosome which is transporting. If it's going from the positive to the negative end, which is usually on the opposite side of the microtubule, those are dionines. And if you look at this protein carefully, you can see it's almost got like two feet-like appendages, and it literally cleaves at it as if it's like walking across the microtubule. Okay, so the microtubules, they originate from some work called the centrosome. Each centrosome consists of a pair of centrioles, and around them are the nucleating sites, which consist of gamma tubulin complexes. And the way that which the microtubules grow is that they grow by adding tubulin onto the positive end. So next we're going to move on to intermediate filaments. So these give cells mechanical strength, which is the ability to withstand stretching. They are the toughest and most durable cytoskeletal filament, and they surround the nucleus and extend towards the outermost regions of the cytosol. They are anchored at the plasma membrane junctions, which as I mentioned are called desmosomes. And they are also found within the nucleus, given the nuclear envelope strength, and that is called the nuclear lamina. So this is a diagram just showing you all the intermediate filaments. So again, we can see them originating from the desmosomes, and they also go all the way up to the nucleus. So the intermediate filament structure is like a rope-like structure with strands twisted together. 
Each strand is made up of intermediate filament proteins, and each strand consists of an extended alpha helical region. So this is the alpha helical region of the monomer. So this is just one of the intermediate filaments. When they form a dimer, they coil around each other, and as you can see, we've got an amino start and a carboxy terminus. Then they become a staggered tetramer, so that's when two core dimers come together, and as you can see, they're, they're running anti-parallel. Then you build more on top of that until you get eight tetramers around each other, and then once they all bond together, that's when you get this filament. Okay, there are usually four cuts of intermediate filaments. You can get keratin filaments, which are mainly found in epithelial cells. You can get vimitin and vimitin-related filaments, which you can find in connective tissue, muscle, and glial cells. You get neurofilaments, which are obviously found in nerve cells. Then you get nuclear lamins, which are found in the nuclear envelopes of cells. But what happens if there is a defect in the nuclear lamina? Well, that results in a disease called progeria. So this gentleman in the middle, he has progeria. So you basically you get advanced signs of aging by 18 to 24 months. You get wrinkled skin, loss of teeth and hair, cardiovascular disease even before you're a teenager. Approximately 1 in 8 million live births are sufferers. So as a result you get full body alopecia, cardiac problems, low bone density and diff difficulty to gain weight or grow. So the disease results as a problem of the nuclear lamina. So in the nuclear lamina, you get three types of lamins. You get lamin A, lamin B, and lamin C. So first of all, pre-lamin A binds to something called farnesyl, and that becomes a complex of pre-lamin A and farnesyl. The pre-lamin A farnesyl complex then binds to the nuclear envelope. Farnesyl will stay attached to the envelope, releasing a pure lamin A. Lamin A then binds to lamin B and C to form the nuclear lamina. But in progeria, prelamin A is mutated to progerin. As a result, the cleavage does not occur. So you get progerin and farnesyl permanently bound to the nuclear envelope. And as a result, no nuclear lamina can form. So on the left here, this is a normal cell nucleus. As you can see, it's a perfect spherical shape. But those with progeria have this shape, a completely distorted nucleus. And as a result, you get, the, you get those symptoms as mentioned. In order to treat these, we could use farnesyl transferase inhibitors. So one in particular is called lonafarnib. So what this does, it prevents farnesyl from binding to progerin. So that also prevents farnesyl from binding to the nuclear envelope. And as a result, you get a relatively normal nuclear envelope. Then the final filament we're going to move on to is actin. So actin is responsible for cell movement and cell rigidity. So again, as I'll mention again, you see you get the actin around the outsides of the cells, so giving it that shape. So the actin structure is a thin thread-like appearance of twisted chains. So this here is an actin monomer, and as you can see the actin is then twisted into these helixes, and these helixes then interlink, thus giving you the, act the actin filaments. And that's practically it for today. So now we come to the test yourself section, so here I'm going to ask you some questions and I'm going to give you an allocated amount of marks and your job is to try and think how do you get all those marks so I'm not going to tell you how to get the marks, it's up to you so for six marks, draw labelled diagrams to show the three types of microfilaments within the cytoskeleton for five marks, describe the structure and function of a microtubule and then for six marks, give an example of a disease associated with a faulty slash missing microfilament and explain how the lack of this filament causes the disease so I hope you enjoyed this presentation, I hope you've learned something new, and good luck revising. Peace.